Hi, this is Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings on The Voice of America. Today, we are joined by a singer-songwriter who is also a American Idol finalist. We'd like to welcome Michael J. Woodard to The Voice of America, to our worldwide audience and Border Crossings. Hi, Michael. Hello. Hello, Larry. Hello, world. Hello, world. Now, you are in Los Angeles, right? You come to L.A. via Philadelphia. Yes, yes, yes. I am currently in Los Angeles, but I moved here about six years ago for school coming from Philadelphia. Yeah. And what school were you going to? Musicians Institute. I went to oh. Musicians Institute. Yeah. So did you did yeah. you finish your studies? Did you get that degree in music? Well, there's a whole story there um, okay. that we can divulge into. So that's Musicians Institute is how I um, came and encountered American Idol. So I was in my second year of studies. It was supposed to be four, but I was in my second year when I auditioned for the show. And luckily it was through my school. So all of the uh, support, most of it came from the school in terms of, you know, auditioning and wow. things like that. So, yeah, yeah. That's great. Now, so American Idol, that's a that's a, one of the biggest platforms, the biggest stages you could possibly be on as a young yes, aspiring musician. Yes, sir. And obviously it worked out well for you. You were on Team Katie, I guess. Katy Perry is the is the one who said, I really like Michael J. Woodard. And, and she pushed you through. And you made yeah. it, uh, you know, you made it ahead of thousands of people who auditioned because, yes. you know, they, they yes. go around the country and pick people. So what was that like when you first heard? Yep, we accepted you and you're you're going to be on the show. Well, it was um, something that I wouldn't have imagined happening. A lot of the time when you go and audition for reality TV shows, you don't think you're going <laughs> to make it because it's so rare that you see someone that you know that has gone in and auditioned and they actually make it past the judges rounds. So when I got those yeses, I was in disbelief almost. I think somebody had to shake me like, did this just happen? <laughs> um, because that's 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 the one thing that you go into, you're like, oh my God, I don't know. I'm going to try my best, but you know, it's so rare. So I think when um, when that happened for me, I was definitely like, okay, this is this has got to be meant to be, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and no matter like, how much you prepare mentally, you can't really be ready to walk in the room and then be singing in front of Lionel Richie, Katy Perry and no. Luke Bryan. That's just not something that someone can really prepare for. It's not something you could prepare for, because when you're practicing, you don't and visualize the judges you're singing in front of for some reason. And you probably should, but I'm like the average human being isn't going to sit there and be like, okay, let me teach myself how not to be nervous when I see them. You're just gonna be focusing <laughs> on learning the songs and making sure you execute it in a great way. You know, you don't really think about who you're singing in front of. So when you go into the room and then you're in front of Lionel Richie, Katy Perry, Luke Bryan, all, I, um set it in the order that they were sitting. <laughs> um, it's pretty nerve wracking, you know, and that's something that you never prepare yourself for. So just imagine that trying to sing the song really well and then having to deal with the nerves. Like mm. it's crazy. It's crazy. And nothing, ha I can't imagine anything being more intimidating or making you more vulnerable than to be critiqued week after week after week for yes. your singing. You know, most times in this business, when you do your career, everybody tells you how great you are. That's typically yeah. the response, you know, but here are people whose job it is to find what's wrong and tell you so you can make it right. What was yeah. the best advice you got and from who on the show? Oh my gosh. Oh, Larry, you put me on the spot. Well, I'll say one of the most valuable things that I learned was actually from Katie, um, or, or just one of the things that um, stood out because along the course of the show, you'll get those jewels that the judges just drop um, in your professional life or your professional life. But Katie told me something the first day that I met the judges. She said, you know, um, everybody here, you know, can sing, but you have a tone and that will be your ace in this competition. Use that. And then that's, I think that's what I carried with me through the whole competition. It was almost like a confirmation, her saying that, because over the course of my life, in terms of my vocals, I always knew that, you know, there are a lot of people can sing, but there definitely has to be something that can separate me from a lot of other people that can sing. And that was my tone of voice. So instead of practicing my runs, I would practice my tone and, and, and the, the little uniqueness that I have, and I would perfect it over time. So when I came to America, and I don't, Katie told me, I hear it, 
use it, I was like, okay, that's just confirmation, you know? So, right. um, yeah, I think that was definitely one of the most valuable things that someone taught me while being there for sure. That's great. That's great. To get that advice is priceless. To have all these stars, these accomplished stars kind of guiding you, that's, that's, you, you can't really find that anywhere. That's, no. you'd be hiring three stars as your vocal coach. And that's just kind of unheard of. But uh, yes. so now we've talked about tone. We've talked about how Michael J. Woodard, you know, can really dig deep and feel it. So yes. what we're going to do now is ask for you to give us a sample. Yes. Well, the first song that I'm going to be singing is my single that is um, about to come out. Um, if this has dropped by then, it's already out. But you guys will be hearing that today. It's called Show Some Teeth. I hope you like it. All right. Michael J. Woodard is going to perform it for us live right here on Border Crossings. I know it's a struggle like undercover life. It's a muscle, muscle. One make all so rocky. Why chase off my body? I know you'll get rubber like bouncing over fights. You're a lover when I don't know how to copy. It's just you, it's not me. Yeah, you hide when you fall and don't show it off, but I'm still involved. I still got your back. I still want you back. I know you love me. So a little more deep. It's what I can now say. We so different, shout to cinnamon, but I love ya, love ya. Don't let go, just hold me. You make me shake, God, see ya. These stars, we so Michelin, ain't ambivalent. Dip is stutter, so stutter. When it gets tough, you got me. When it gets rough, I believe. You can run, you can stop all day long, but I'm still involved. I still got you, baby. I still want you bad. I know you love me. For so a little more tea. That's what I would now say, yeah. Wow, yeah. I know you love me. For so a little more tea, yeah. That's what I would now say, yeah. Oh, 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 do you love me? That's Michael J. Woodard, who's performing for us live. It's a brand new single. And uh, Michael, what's that called again? It's called Show Some Teeth. Show Some Teeth. What inspired that single? You know what? I think definitely smiling um, inspired, <laughs> inspired the single. When uh, me and my collaborators were working on the song, I think the biggest note was kind of like envision like, a person walking down the street and not cat calling at someone, but like trying to uh, indulge in conversation with someone. And a lot of time what you'll hear is some guys will say to females like, oh, you, you should smile more. You should smile more. Why are you always frowning? So I think we definitely took that sentiment, but made it positive and less creepy, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so uh, I, I guess you could say I was already in a relationship and I'm just telling that person to, you know, smile more. Like there's a lot to be happy about and, um, you know, just let me see them teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me see those grills. Let me see those grills. Yeah. <laughs> now I have heard, um, you know, that you like to focus on positive music. You just mentioned positivity and that yeah. resonates throughout most of your music is, you know, I mean, that's, that's a great message. Why do you feel that that's something that you want to do? And, and that's the message you want to send. Yeah, I, I think that it's something that I don't really even try to do because writing the songs, um, like my song, Hopeful, for example, 
it, it, it all happens very genuinely. So when I come into the studio, like um, we'll sit there and, and I guess what's on our minds is what we want to write about that day. And how that song came about was just me being me and the, the collaborators that I wrote the song with were like, hey, let's, let's touch on that. So everything, when it comes to like my subject matter and what I write and how positive it is, it happens very authentically. Like it's something that I really don't try to do. And then when I bring it to my label and I'm like, yeah, this is the song, I think everything just falls into place. So it's almost like the positivity that I'm putting out happens very authentically. Like it's, it's definitely not on purpose. It's just a lot of my songs just happen to have that positivity. And I think that's just because I am naturally that way. So it just comes out in the music uh, naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think that it's important to actually have music out, out here um, today like that, because if you look at the times that we're living in, I think it, it, positivity is definitely warranted and, and needed. And I've always, growing up, I always witnessed music as that escape. And I've always thought music should be that escape because, you know, when you live in a world like this, you know, you need something to take your mind off of all of the craziness. And mm -hmm. kind of, I want my music to create that world for uh, its listeners to come into and, and, you know, take a second from life and just breathe and relax and, and escape into this dream fantasy you know, whimsical mm. place that I've created with my music, you know? No, well, that's great because you are taking advantage of the platform you were given to do something positive yes. for your listeners, for your fans, your supporters, and people who get to hear your music, which by the way, you know, a lot of people are hearing your music. Uh, you've, you've done really, really well for Thank yourself you. up to now. And Thank I think, you. what was the year you were on American Idol? It was 20, what was the year? It was a few years ago. It was a, it was a few years ago now. I, I feel like time has been going by crazily guys but it was in 2018 2018 so that's four years it's and four so years. now you had a lot of music out you've done a lot of touring what do you think you've learned what's been the most important lesson you've learned since you left american idol what is this business oh taught gosh. michael j woodard well you know what american idol just starting from there it it really get, gave you an inside peek of what the industry is like so I think that I was lucky enough to have have this because a lot of the time artists don't get to ask themselves or, or ask themselves after they've had an experience like the industry, is this what I want to do? And that's what I had. So American Idol pretty much taught me the ins and outs in the industry and how, how it works down from the performance all the way to the contracts. So it, it's taught me all about that. So I definitely took that with me after leaving the show. Mm -hmm. And then I think after the show is, is definitely just, it's, it's just been teaching me, the journey that I've been on has just been teaching me to stay true to myself and always stay authentic to myself because I learned that that's people like me for me. You know, when I was doing American Idol, I, I, I did it as authentically 100% myself. And I think that it just taught me to carry that with me the rest of my career. Mm -hmm. And also, um, just after American Idol, writing songs has taught me to be honest and it's taught me to be transparent. Um, and it's taught me to, it's given me like a hustle, you know, like mm -hmm. I definitely see the vision and I, I'm doing everything I possibly can from the time I wake up and from the time I go to sleep to like make this dream come true, you know? So. Right. One of the bigger challenges is when you are on a show where they give you the songs to sing. And those yeah. are songs that might not be in the same style that you choose, I mean, for your career. And then yeah. when you actually release a record or you go out on tour and it's very different than what you sang on the TV, people are saying, is this Michael J. Woodard? Is this yeah. the same guy? So that's yeah. got to be a challenge to do. And here you are writing your own stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, you know what? It, it can be a challenge. But Larry, it's like when I started when I started on the show, I knew that my career continues after the show. I knew that the career wasn't end all. I meant my, I knew that my time on American Idol wasn't end all be all. So mm -hmm. I'm like, these viewers that are watching me every week, I'm taking them on the journey that I'm pursuing after the show. So what I did right. was, I knew how much I like to be a genre bender. You know, I, I, I hate, I'll get really bored if I tend to, 
you know, write songs of the same genre consecutively throughout the week, you know, mm-hmm. I have to switch it up. So <laughs> I, I always knew that I kind of wanted to break those barriers in the industry where you don't really have to sing one type of music, you know, if, if your heart feels like you need to express itself in other ways. So on American Idol, what I did was I practiced that. So I would pick songs of different genre every time it was time for me to sing because I knew I didn't want my, the listeners and the people that were watching me, I didn't want them to be confused after the show. You know what I'm saying? So I think I took the songs that I was singing, was singing, I would flip them and make them my own. And I would do different type of genres every time I sang, because I knew that that's, that's what I'll practice in my own original music after the show. So it's not that much of a challenge now, Larry, because I feel like I've in, in, uh, introduced myself in that way early on. And um, I feel like I set the record straight in that way early on. Mm. So now I can like do whatever I want. And you have quite a, a variety of influences. I read Coldplay is an influence of yours. And so, I, I mean, who else? Of course, you sang in church growing up. You sang yes. in the church choir. So gospel is yes. definitely a part of, of who Michael J. Woodard is and the R&B sound. Yes. But I mean, Coldplay is not really what you call R&B sound. It's not exactly. And it's, it's a testament to me and how, how my music is so different and it'll probably be different a lot of the time over the course of my career, but still not straying too far from the artist that is Michael J. Um, but Coldplay is just one of the many artists that um, definitely inspire me. There's, I think I'm not just attracted to genre, I'm attracted to sound. And I think anything that moves me emotionally and musically is what I cling to. So Coldplay definitely um, does that for me. Imogen Heap definitely does that to me. I adore her. Brandy is my all time favorite, my number one. Mm-hmm. Um, I love SZA. I love um, uh, this artist named Dawn Richard. There's so many different, Queen, I adore Queen. I love the Beatles um, and those are all pieces that I kind of like take from and, and combine them. And then I'm a huge pop music head. So Katy Perry <laughs> and Lady Gaga and, you know. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. And it's gotta be challenging to write those kinds of songs of different genres when you're sitting down and imagining a totally different sound every time, but uh, you, you've done it well. And so speaking of sound, speaking of songs, speaking of genres, we're gonna ask Michael J. Woodard to do another song for us. Yes. Um, guys, this next song is called Hopeful. It is out and you can buy it, purchase it, stream it on whatever platform you see fit. All right. Here's Michael J. Woodard, Hopeful on Border Crossings. Company, let it try to comfort me. All the pain and agony, will just leave that alone. Go ahead, hit the road. I don't waste any energy, make it sad as the enemy. It just is me. Nothing's gonna kill my vibe. I'm only riding high, sitting on cloud nine with the birds. You ever think our life that we only get it once? No, we don't get it twice. So that's why. I keep my hopeful when my cup is running empty, yo. I keep my mind light when my thoughts are weighing heavy, yo. And that's what I do when I don't want to lose how I cope. That's how I cope. I keep my hopeful when my cup is running empty, yo. I'm from seven my sanity's and cry as it is Soaking up the calm before the storm Because that's where my paradise is uh-huh. Nothing's gonna kill my vibe I'm only riding high Sitting on cloud nine with the birds I You ever think our life And we only get it once No, we don't get it twice So that's why I keep my hope when my cup is running empty, oh. I keep my mind light when my thoughts are waiting happy, oh, oh, oh. And that's what I do when I don't want to lose how I go. That's how I go, yeah. I keep my hope when my cup is running empty, oh, yeah. 
my hope full when my cup is running empty. Oh, nothing's gonna kill my vibe. I'm only riding high, sitting on cloud nine with the birds eye. You overthink our life, and we only get it once. No, we don't get it twice, so that's why. Full when my cup is running empty. Uh. Keep my mind light when my thoughts are wet and heavy. Yeah. And that's what I do when I don't wanna lose how I go. That's how I go. Ooh, yeah. I keep my hope full when my cup is running empty. Oh. I keep my hope full when my cup is running empty. Oh. Border Crossings, and we're checking out a new song. It's called Hopeful. It's actually hope and then full. It's not spelled like you'd spell hopeful, but uh, it's yes, Michael right. J. Woodard who's with us today, and that sounded great. So that's definitely an inspiring song, filled with hope. Thank you. Filled with hope. Filled with hope. Yes. Now, um, speaking of hope for the hopeless, hope for somebody that needs hope and help right now, how has COVID affected your life this past year? Oh my God, it's been crazy. Um, I, I feel like now in retrospect, I'm kind of like, I'm grateful for it. Not the pandemic, but I think the time that we spent in quarantine, I think the time that we spent in quarantine, it definitely taught me a lot about myself. It definitely taught me a lot of the things that mentally, emotionally, things that I had been coping with for a long time, that were actually not okay to be coping with, right. you know, it, it definitely held up a mirror for me and let me kind of knock out all the demons that I had been, you know, struggling with over time. And I think that might've been subconsciously with everybody might've needed um, mm -hmm. at that time, because I feel like the result, I, I feel so much greater. I feel like I'm closer to being my best self. Um, and I, I, I'm definitely grateful for that experience. Musically, um, it didn't really stop, stop much. I think Larry immediately, whenever we got clearance to go back into the studio, I was there. Um, I'm a workaholic, so I like to be in the studio every day or as much as I can, uh, as much as I can be. So it, it didn't stop me much. Um, Zoom sessions was something that I had to get used to, um, something that are in, definitely in the rear view, I think. Right. Um, you know, maybe not. You know, if anybody sees this and wants to do a Zoom with me, I'm open to it. But, you know, <laughs> definitely a struggle. Um, but, yeah, I think that um, over the course of time and this pandemic is definitely – taught me a lot about myself um, and experiences that I'm actually grateful for thinking about them now. Um, now, I wish that it wouldn't hinder live performance venues as much, but um, things are looking clear. Things are definitely looking up. So. Now, Michael, you did say something and I want to expand on it a little bit and, yes, and dig, peel, peel away some of the layers here, the onion, and find out you know what's going on inside of Michael J. Where you said you went yeah. through some demons, you went through some struggles. Since yeah. people are getting to meet you for the first time, I mean, I don't know how much you're willing to share and how much you're willing to expose to people, but you yeah. can use this platform in, and again, positive ways, because you, given who yeah. you are and what you do, you are a role model. Yeah. And there will be people tuning yeah. in who might experience the same challenges that you did, and you might help them through your experience. So can you tell us a little bit about what you meant? Yes, of course. I think that I was, I think I, I never had time to really sit down and kind of just hammer out where I was in my life because I think I had been on go, 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 go. And I think it's almost like I neglected time with God. It's like I, I neglected time for self-care. It's the, it's the insecurities that I might've been facing with just like minor bits of sadness that sure. I actually um, compensated for with activities, you know what I'm saying? And I didn't yes. have time to really sit down and be like, yo, like I have, I kind of got issues a little bit that I need to, you know, figure out. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, a lot of the time, um, I definitely compensated with work, but it was a subconscious thing because mm -hmm. it's not like I, I had like these serious issues and I was like, okay, no, I'm ignoring them. I'm going to go to work. That wasn't the thing. It's just things that come out when you're sitting 
in the house with nothing to do day by day by day. So you're always in thought. Mm -hmm. So they're just little things that, that I had to figure out whether it was insecurities and like just tiny bits of just sadness or, or depression and things like that. And just like knocking, knocking that out and really being faced with, um, having to pull yourself out of it, having to go outside and go for walks and having to read my Bible and spending more time with God and um, things that definitely got me through it. And now I'm like, I'm clear up here, you know, like I'm good, but I think- You're in a good just, place. I'm in a good place. I'm in a good place mm -hmm. there. And I think just for the listeners that are watching, make sure you find time to just sit back and breathe, you know, and, and evaluate, am I good? Like mm -hmm. it's, it's okay not to be good, but a lot of time and what I'm doing in my music, Larry, is I want to make sure that I'm being relatable and I'm talking about my struggles, but I want my listeners to know that there's healing there, you know, that you don't have to stay there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that's what I want to encourage today. You know, that's, that's great. I mean, that's a great message and, Thank and I'm you. sure it's going to resonate with a lot of people you know, and I appreciate you sharing, you know, a little bit of insight into who you are and what, what, makes you tick. Um, I wanted to ask about new music. You've got a new album yes. coming out or a new EP. What's the plan for this year? The year just started. So what's the plan? The year just started. I have a lot planned, Larry. Oh my God. Um, sometimes I know my label probably wants to pull their hair out. I'm like, you know, but I'm so busy. I, I have a lot of goals and a lot of things that I want to accomplish, especially by the, the end of this, um, this, this year. Um, definitely an EP is coming. Um, I'm only three songs in, um, that are singles, but I'm, I've been working on my project for a very, very long time. So I'm expecting it to come out uh, in the springtime, uh, end of March, hopefully. Um, but it's gonna be a five song, five or six song uh, EP. And it's definitely talking about love and heartbreak. I'm a big romance guy, even though I haven't really been through a romantic situation myself. But I like really? to talk about it. no, <laughs> no. Um, you know, I'm just I'm like a big weirdo. I was homeschooled. I'm like a loner, so you know my macking skills aren't really up 100. percent But um, it's it's funny because I like to indulge in that topic, like in terms of romance and and um and love and heartbreak in my music and I don't know why it just resonates with me you know I'm just mm -hmm. I guess I'm just a lovable guy but it'll definitely have a lot of songs about love in there and heartbreak and then there's going to be a special song in there that was dedicated to um the passing of my dad and oh, I'm sorry it, to hear that no it's okay it's okay it, it happened um a while ago maybe like a couple years ago just kind of still recent but I've had time to cope and cope and deal okay. so All right. um there's going to be a lot in there a lot of good stuff so I'm really excited Mm, and maybe a collaboration with Brandy. How about that? We're going to we're going to manifest. If there not the EP album, you know, <laughs> it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. So we'll look for that sometime, maybe in March. You March. know, sometime first first half or middle of uh, twenty two. So that that'll be yes, great. Sir. And so touring wise, we're talking to an international audience. Are you planning to to do some touring? Oh, I want to go everywhere. I want to go everywhere. I want to do Europe. I want to do Africa. I want to do Asia, South America, of course, Great. the U.S., North America. So pretty much everywhere. Um, okay. You know, it's touring is something that I've, I've done the first time in 2018. I mm -hmm. think in terms of having a musical a music career, that's definitely a question you have to plague yourself with. Do I like tour? And luckily, I adore it. I adore mm -hmm. it, Larry. I'm a big scenic route driver. So I mm -hmm. like to visit a lot of places. I like to see a lot of things. So um, when I had my first tour bus experience, like I would often go to the front of the bus and sit next to the driver because I just thought that big window at the front of the tour bus was just like <laughs> a gift personally given to me by God himself. I adored it. It was great. <laughs> so, well, you know, you have the personality for touring. I'll tell you, you're, per you're bubbly. You're sh showing us the teeth. You're oh, yeah. Looking happy, you know, so that that's great. I mean, you, you obviously have a good time and love what you're doing. And that comes through very clearly. So I'm going to ask if yeah. you do another song for us. Yes. So this last one is called Why Are You Texting Me? This was my first song ever released. Now, this one is a little bit more relatable in terms of personal struggle that um, I've had with someone and that a lot of people have had with someone. So hope this resonates with you guys and I hope you love it.
It's called All Why right. You Texting Me. Why Are You Texting Me? Michael J. Woodard here on Border Crossings. Texting me, I keep watching me. You don't let me see, hey. Drowning in between our sand, what we used to be. Trust, and I got used to that love that doesn't love you back. Trust. Can't get enough of that, yeah. She know they give it, us together. Cause when it feels like good, no way the big can last forever. Forget on you, but I can never. Damn, I wish I could. that love that doesn't love you back to Crossings, and that is a song that came out, what you say, 2018, I, I guess? One of the early songs? This song was 2021. Oh, 2021. <laughs> 2021. Larry, okay. yeah. 2021. So what, let, people will ask, why did you wait four years after American Idol to put out a song or your songs or your music? Why? why? You still haven't had an album or EP out. So why? what are we waiting for, Michael? You know what, Larry, I love, you know, I can consider this. I've only done like three interviews since I've been signed. So wow. re- recently it's just been like starting Larry, but that's, that's like a hot question. You know, I like, I like that question. Larry. It's really good. It's like <laughs> put the pressure on, but um, th- the thing about it is I think after American Idol, it was a whirlwind of things like mm-hmm. um, going on tour, like, a month and a half later um, and then getting home from tour and, and taking meetings with label and, um, and finding out that Katie wanted to sign me immediately. And then uh, sitting through kind of having to wait for that process while everything is getting like mapped out behind the scenes, you know, just, um, just things, making sure deals are great and, you know, and whatever. And, you know, and, and then being, afraid that Katie did, like wasn't going to sign me anymore and like having Katie DM me and say no I got you like it was very cool mm-hmm. um so it all took some time so 2018 was like a year that went by just mapping out every detail of my life and what it was going to be for the next couple years mm-hmm. and then we got to 2019 April 2019 and that's when I actually started recording 
2019. So um, then 2020 hit. Mm. And you know what 2020 was. Yeah, oh yeah. Year of nothing. Everything the behind the scenes, right. but we all hit the brakes. So I think what was supposed to, what happened in 2021 was supposed to happen in 2020. So then all the time that we didn't spend mapping out the details of what the process of putting on my music was going to be like, we saved that for, it was like delayed like months and months mm-hmm. and months and months. And then when we got to 2021, that's when I started having the photo shoots. And when I started having to re-record my songs <laughs> and getting them mixed and mastered and really going through that process. So I think outside of 2020 being like the halt on things for a lot of people, I think I, outside of that, I wanted my music to be right. I wanted everything to be perfect. And I wanted to perfect it to the point where I was like, I'm ready to go. That was 2020 for me. I think I I got signed in April 2019 and then it took me a year to like be like, I'm ready. You know, but then 2020 Mm -hmm. came and it kind of put a halt on things. But I think everything has definitely happened for a reason. And I think I've never been more ready to go into the industry and go into the world and and really start it up, Larry. Mm -hmm. And I know you're doing other things. You're you're an actor too, at least a voice actor. You you were a character on a Netflix animated show. So yes. I mean, that's pretty, do you have, you know, desire to act? Is that something you want to do more of in the future? I used to act a lot when I was younger. And then I kind of like put it on hold when I got to high school, I think, because um, I I don't know, I just started to focus on music more so. And then like a lot of things in the acting world, it wasn't as, um, I guess, fast moving as it was in my singing career. So I think I just Mm -hmm. took some time to focus on that. And then when this animated movie called Arlo the Alligator Boy came along, it was just like the perfect timing because I had already had some acting chops, but I felt like I was a little bit um, rusty. But when I had my first audition, I was like, okay, this is amazing because the producers came to me and they said, hey, the part was like already yours because we got to see your personality from you being on TV every week. And, you know, we knew that we wanted you to play this part. So it was kind of like after I got the part, that's when the learning experience came from um, about acting and, and seeing myself and saying, yo, I could really do this because I'm, I'm kind of good. So I'm like signed to voice acting agency now. It's going great. <laughs> Wow, congratulations. That's very exciting. And, Thank you know, you, you, you have a great personality. I know you're going to go very far in this business. And so the, the single, you know, hopeful is out now. The new single is coming out this week and uh, what is show your teeth. Show some teeth. Yes. Show some teeth. I can't wait for you show to some hear the teeth. actual song. Yeah. Now people want to get your music. They want to find out where you're going, what your schedule's like. Where? What are your sites? Yes. Well, my sites are, you can go to my Instagram at Michael J. Woodard, um, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-J-W-O-O-D-A-R-D. My Twitter's the same. And, you know, we got to plug the TikTok nowadays, Larry. So my TikTok <laughs> is Michael J. Woodard as well. And um, yeah, just continue to keep up with me, guys. I got some big things coming and um, performances coming and, and just big things. I can't wait for y'all to see. So Wow, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. And I know you were, you know, we're in traffic and you're rushing from one place to the next. I know you got a busy schedule, a lot of interviews and things to do. Thank you so much, Michael J. Woodard, for doing this for us. We really appreciate the opportunity to meet you. Of course. I wish it could have been longer. This was so amazing. We yeah. got to do another one like in a, a month. Yeah, or when the album comes yeah. out you come in your, and things open up and COVID's gone, come into our studio. I'd love to have you here. I would love to. Would love to, Larry, for sure. All right. We're talking with Michael J. Woodard. This is Border Crossings. I'm Larry London. You're watching VOA TV.